Hello, it's Big Cat coming back at you live, being fluffier and fluffier than ever. Coming back from the second episode for Misty, like I said, the dreaded Misty. But in this episode first, we're going to talk about how I also got hit by a car, because yes, that is a story. Now, context of the story, I will not be referring to the person in any way, shape, or form. They will be referred to as a person, because I know some people, I'm not saying my subscribers right now, but I know some people can be crazy enough to go and try and hunt down the person who did this, and also because I actually do know the person who hit me with the car, I, I don't want them feeling um, targeted or anything bad like that because obviously I'm just telling the story as to me it's a funny ass story of how it all, all this even happened um, and I'm not mad the person is at all I'm like I didn't even press charge or anything like that so I don't want them to feel like I'm selling your better not it's just me telling a funny story and I just I, I feel like you guys get a laugh out of it too so the gist of it is, I was uh, going to my uh, class, my psychology class, and I was running late, so I was trying to cross the street as soon as possible, and I didn't see this car coming that was on the other side of the street trying to turn, and so the person was turning into the lane I was at, so I see him, and I start jumping backwards. And as I'm jumping backwards, I should have dodged. The problem is the person decided to do a wide turn at the last second. So it was a wider turn, so they nailed me anyway. But they only clipped me. So they nailed me in my leg, and I went into the ground. I'm hollering in pain, like I'm yelling. And they go off a little bit, but they stop, and they go down the window trying to ask if they're okay. My whole thing is just telling me to go because don't know this or can't tell us right now I have severe social anxiety <laughs> I don't like talking to people in person unless I like I know that person and so it's the two-way street in front of the school um, like it's a lot of traffic because the buses that drop people off at that school and stuff like that and buses that pick people up to take to other parts of the school because like I said I'm going to college and I'm like, just go, just go. Because I was like, I'm not trying to have this traffic. I'm not trying to have all this information, all this stuff. Like, I'm not trying to have anything pop up. I'm just no, I don't want this. So I told him to go. So I'm about to head to the school. I was like, wait, I need my wallet anyway. So I had to run to my back, or I say run, but I was limping <laughs> to my car. And then I go back to the um, the classroom. The class make it there in time. And I'm just in there, my legs in pain. So about halfway through class, I get a call from a friend. And it's in the middle of class, so I can't answer it, so I just hung up, hang up on them. But as soon as we won't break, uh, we have like two and a half hour classes, and they give us a break in between the middle of it. I give them a call. We talk for a bit, and we decided we would meet up at the uh, animation, the main animation building for um, that college, and we would go to Denny's afterwards or get food. We didn't decide yet, but we ended up going to Denny's. So um, we meet up at the animation building, and he picks me up, and I tell him what happened. I told him how I got nailed by a car or whatever. And he's like, yeah, I know. I was like, how do you know it wasn't your car? And he tells me that <laughs> his neighbor slash like roommate, because like the way the uh, his apartment set up is like he's like right above the person, but they also like all you kind of like live together. It's weird, but it's I love it. But anyway, yeah. But he was saying like his um, neighbor basically came up to him crying, saying, "I think I might have hit Big Cat." I mean, obviously the person knows who my actual name is, but they referred to me as Big Cat. So they, I think I might, or I'm, I'm referring to myself as Big Cat right now. But I think I might have hit Big Cat, <laughs> and so that person is crying. <laughs> and so that's why he calls me in the middle of class. He never calls me at the time. So he called me in the middle of class trying to make sure I was okay. So now I'm in hysteria because I'm like, it's a person I know hit me. So I end up having him, having this person call the other person so I could talk to that person. Let them know, like, hey, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Blah, blah, blah. They're, they're like, they're like crying in their eyes. I was like that. But I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. So later on that same exact week, we go to the beach. And. This, we start talking about the story and like we're both like we're calling points from our end and I learned three things that day and it made me laugh so but you know I'm a very tall person I'm about like 6'3 and if, depending on shoes to some other we're 6'4 so you gotta understand I'm a very tall dude also I'm a black guy with a trench coat I always wear a trench coat it's a big black guy with a trench coat this is midday so when the hit happened it was midday and the person was telling me that they didn't realize they hit a person they thought they hit an animal they thought they hit a squirrel so apparently I was I was a squirrel. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> the other thing was that they didn't even see me, too. That was another reason why they thought I was an animal, because they didn't even see me. But that's also explainable, because the way they were turning, um, you know how the cars have that, fur, that piece of diagonal uh, middle, like that's in the front that holds like the windshield sort of in place? I'm pretty sure that's what was blocking me from their view. So that that's probably what happened. That's why they didn't see me. That's why I was a passion on Solby. The third thing I learned is when I got hit, I put my hands in the car and I would fly. Well, there was a guy that drove with them 
that day, and he, uh, the dude was like noticing the hand marks. He's like, oh, this is pretty cool. These are like some type of painted marks. Well, no, they were my hands from when I got nailed, and my hands imparted the car, and they streaked, and they stayed there. <laughs> So that person started laughing their mind out because they realized those are my handprints. I mean, obviously the person who hit me knew that, but the person who, the guy that drove with them didn't know that, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those, like, this is a small world type deal because it's just like, how did this happen? <laughs> not only was it someone, because I actually know the person who hit me, I was like, how is it someone that hit me? I like, know, yeah, it's just. <laughs> so. I mean, more of the story, you gotta be careful when crossing the street. I should have double checked this like part, that's my own fault, but it's also good just to take a good laugh and that stuff because I mean, I'm not dead and I'm walking fine. I do have a weird pain in my leg, but I'm pretty sure that's from something else, so it's fine. Um, so, either way, I'm just chilling. But I thought it was a funny story to tell. Like I said, if you do somehow figure out or you do know who it was like that, don't say anything in the comments. Just let it go because I'm not mad at that person in any way, shape, or form. Um, to me, it was just a funny thing that happened. And I still I still laugh at it every time I think about it. Like the story just saved me. And everyone I told, like in person, that we talked about it just also laughs because it's just like, how? Out of all the things that could have happened, how? <laughs> so. Like I said, I'm not mad about it at all in any way, shape, or form. I am not, but like I said, if you somehow do know who I am or I did figure out like the whole situation story, please do not put anything in the comments because, like I said, I'm not mad at the person. I don't want them feeling any type of way or feel like I'm so angry at them with that. It's just me telling a funny story. Um, since I did not take as much time to thought as when we take up, I guess I'll start talking about some of my uh, classes and stuff like that, and like some of the like, troubles I had and stuff. Um, as I told you, my animation file, so let me go into the story like how this all happened with my animation file, as I mentioned in the uh, previous episode. Um, I spent like the final weekend before that, like, that class working on it, trying to finalize it, and I was going to do So I spent like at least 14 hours working straight. Over the weekend, I worked on it a lot. But it was that Sunday night into Monday, I spent about 14 hours straight just working. And I decided to take a break and go to sleep at 5 a.m. in the morning. I was going to sleep for two hours, wake up back at 7, and continue working because my class was until about 11. So I do that exactly. And I wake up at 7, come to my computer after I had saved it, and open the file up. And all my frames are gone. And I'm just like, what do you mean your frames are gone? So I look at them down below with like the frame and the timeline and they, the frames were there but there was no images in it except for my walk cycle. I still don't know why my walk cycle was not destroyed but it wasn't. So I'm just scrolling through and scrolling through and I was like this makes no sense. So I close that up and open up a backup file I had. Backup file had the same problem. Opened up a previous version. Previous version had the same problem. I was like why did all my versions of this file I had do the same thing? I was just completely confused and I was just like Crap, so I emailed the professor, the professor's like, hey, you're not the only one who had these problems, so since you have these problems, what I'll do is uh, make a, like a some mini project people can do for partial credit, and we'll call it account that way, and I was like, okay, thank you. So, either way, that day I go into class, and I uh, show my professor that file, and I'm just like, hey, you see, I'm not joking, this happened, so my professor looks into it, and it spends about like, like 10 minutes looking around and playing around with the file, trying to see what um, she, she can find out. And so the professor comes, uh, lets me know, she's like, so there is a way to fix this. And the professor was like, you'd have to go into every, um, so I have to go through every layer that I have and go to a frame, any frame, just go to a frame. And I have to go and basically, I would have to go and basically retrieve the image that I drew or that I created from the files within the folder. So, like I said, it didn't actually delete it, it just hit it somewhere. And so I would have to go into the individual file from the individual layer and pull it back into the image and then on that entire layer for the entire time I'd have to go and select that image in the library. The problem with this is I had roughly this matchup has become one side. 50 layers 
I mean, maybe I should have taken away 100 because I had to re import my character twice for the rig. So I had to re import my rig for the character twice. So I had roughly 100 images. And I had roughly about a little under 400 frames. And so not only would I have to go and get every single one of those 100 images back into play, I have to go to every single frame that I had set up and activate that image. And this was on the last week of school. And I saw my ZBrush project I had to do. And I was just like, I can't, I can't do it. I don't have the time and I don't have the strength. <laughs> like, I, I just, I, I don't. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know what, what you, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, I ended up just taking a smaller project and I actually didn't finish the class at Silver B though, which was nice. Um, so yeah, no, that was, no, that was, that was something. Um, well, that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about for this episode, so we're going to leave it at that and we'll focus back into the, the stadium. Uh, battles are going right now, from what I've not paying attention to, because I was definitely not paying attention to anything earlier. He just sort of barely in there, but he's doing his best. Venusaur is breaking stereotypes, doing his best. <laughs> Falling asleep is going to make this a one-sided fight. I'm surprised it actually hit. <laughs> I was not expecting that to hit, but it did. And the good news about that is uh, it only needs to hit once, and I'm basically good. Neither one is conceding an inch. Yeah, I forgot. I really set up on this dude. It woke up. I mean, to be fair, I was trying to keep me in a sort of lives to the best of my ability. Battle rages on. That's kind of why I switch out here because I was trying to keep Venusaur alive. That was my ability, but it is what it is. Also, how do you like that new form in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for. Um, Oh my gosh, I cannot remember his name. Tentacruel. Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to say I couldn't remember Tentacruel's name. Holy crap. Man, my Pokemon all just go in the trash right now. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, I think it's like the new form for him because it's pretty interesting. I, mean, I don't know if it's like the new form, but it's definitely practically the same thing, so. I don't know. That's the question of the day. How do you guys feel about that new form? But aside from that, this fight's basically over. Um, he gets walled out by Lapras completely, and also with the Leech Seed, it's just he has no way of winning. And on top of that, I can't guard the background any lane. <coughs> so Kangar basically finishes out at you if um, Lapras somehow died, and both of us were due. I was hoping he stayed dead, or not dead, asleep for a little longer, so that way I could um, use Funisaur to win. Whatever. And then here comes the dreaded Misty. And I'm like, I don't remember why. I had, I had a lot of trouble with her, and I don't know really what exactly what it was, but I do remember I had trouble with her for quite a bit. I think it was because her Doug Trio caught me off guard. It was either her Doug Trio or it was her Executor. It was one of the two of those that caught me off guard, and I can't remember which one it was. But it completely caught me off guard, and I was like, well, why do you even have this? I was like, you should not have this. You know, why does she have a Doug Trio? I don't even know why she has that. Call me on guard. Yeah, and then this part was just a wall off, basically. We were walling each other off. She got a crit and she was lucky as hell. But not really lucky, because crits are based on speed from the correctly. So, it wasn't not necessarily that I was lucky, it was just more like, you're annoying. But I know I survived this, and then she critted again. What screwed me over is that special fall. 
because the way special works in this game, you haven't heard me talk about it like that 17 times. I seem to always beat myself beyond reason, but when special um, falls, it lowers both your technically special is considered both your special attacking stat and your special defending stat if you were compared to like generation three and onwards. So it drops both of those basically, and that's very dangerous. So I'm gonna stay in trying to attack just because I was gonna let Lapras die because there's no point in keeping him out right now. There was like none because it was basically dead and I was pretty sure she didn't bring um, Blastoise or anything else in the back like that. So. I don't know where the other two Pokemon are brought, because I know I brought Lapras, but also we have the Inner Swarm Gengar, yeah. This is why I was scared, because <laughs> Exeatur is a Psychic type, and I didn't think this through about bringing both of them. I should have brought Tauros, <laughs> but <laughs> I was treated dumb ass right here, so. So. I got lucky here. And then he does this, and I'm like, wow, I am screwed. So, I go for, uh, go for um, Razor Leaf because I'm hoping that the crit will do a lot of damage enough to like basically kill it, but it does basically nothing. The reason why I didn't want to go for another Body Slam is because Body Slam is just not strong enough to do anything. Which, so I kind of screwed me here. And then I also got screwed again because of the critical didn't finish it. So Venusaur gets taken out here. And I'm down to just Gengar. And the problem is, is here I'm just like, if Missy Burn uh, brought a Duck Trio, it is game one for me. I have no way of winning if she brings a Duck Trio. I have no way of winning. So I'm like praying, please do not bring a Duck Trio. Please do not bring Duck Trio. Please do not bring Duck Trio. <laughs> So I take an executor with the uh, psychic and I'm like, okay. And of course, <laughs> they're they're lucky play. She brought Duck Trio. And I'm just like, why? Why did you bring Duck Trio? And why didn't I bring Dragonite? <laughs> so obviously I'm like, I'm dead here because the trio is faster and the earthquake hit. And it almost killed me. So here I'm going for Confuse Ray because I'm hoping Confuse Ray can cause it hit itself twice. If it hits itself twice, I won. Because Gengar can do Psychic twice and finish it off. So here I go first and I'm like, wait, so we're speed tied. We're not even. It's not that it's faster, it's, it's speed tied. Which is weird, but it is. I'm like, okay, fine, it's a speed tie. But then it hits itself in Confusion. I'm like, please let me go first again. Please let me go first again. Please let me go first again. Please. <laughs> I'm like begging, please let me go first. And I do, I was like, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I should have lost that fight so hard. I should have lost that fight so hard. <laughs> anyway, with that, that ends the battle. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you guys next episode. Bye.